car. Bruce, uh, normally driving a blue car, got to get used to that red machine. I know towards the end of last year he changed the color on that, but it still doesn't seem like the same Bruce Thomas without the blue car. He did a good job with that car last year, as this is only his second outing in his first feature, as he didn't make the feature. So the hot laps is over, and we are getting ready to turn him loose. Ray Christian the third on the inside, but look at Chris Garside. They go into turn number two simultaneously. Yeah, G side's got a good run out of turn two, but your leader is RC three down the back stretch. And kicking up his heels is Jim Banfield in car number 22 as he tries to Jenny Craig his way underneath Garside. And also Anthony Flannery looking to make it two in a row. He's being challenged by Jason Palmer for fourth place. Right behind them, it's the number 15, Big Country, and it looks like uh, Thomas going at it in the 35. And Thomas is in a hurry as he is able to torpedo his way underneath Jeff Smith. So two former champions are side by side going for six and seven. Late models down the back stretch up to laser speed. Your leader, RC3, it's Ray Christian the third. Now Thomas has gotten by Smith momentarily, and he tries to attack the back bumper of the Anthony Flannery car. Closest battle, second and third. The 83 at Garside and the 22 at Jim Banfield, but the yellow comes out. Looks like Scott Rutherford of the number 41 car has looped it in turn number four, trying to get that machine refired. So he is on the one. And so some uh, great work. Uh, we said during qualifying today, it's good to see Mike Sweeney back in car number 10. I think Mike Sweeney is the ultimate hard trier. Yeah, no doubt about it. It's good to see him back. And uh, i tell you, Mike is getting very competitive this season. Looks really good in that black number 10 car. Off the pace and out of the race, however, is Al King in the zero. Here we go, the green flag's out, and it looks like RC3 is going to take off, but he's got himself a drag race to turn number one. And Ray Christian oh. makes a move in the same place. We have trouble, and uh, two cars involved, and the yellow flag will come out. One car, Mike Sweeney, is able to drive away, so some punishment in the first quarter, and we have our second yellow flag. Looks like Walt Sutcliffe in the 38 car. Now that was a car he purchased from Joe Curioso, and he was idle. Jason Palmer has already locked up the title. Doesn't mean anything to him as he went for the win in qualifying, and he is in pretty good shape in the early going here. We're in good shape when we tune in to Dave Barabal. Well, they've already begun work on the right side of the number 10 of Mike Sweeney. However, the hood is up on the 10 machine. Engine off right now. Mike's still sitting in the car, and they're working in the engine compartment of that car. Mike Sweeney is driven here in the Modifieds as well as the late models. And had a pretty good season last year as Craig Merriman telling our field they have one to go before we get ready for action. And the front row is populated by Ray Christian III in car number 93 and the 83 of Chris Garside. We saw Ray Christian in the mini socks tonight, but uh, not good luck as that number 93 car blew up on him. Yeah, Soup Savardi is going to have to go to work on that machine. Luckily, the season's <laughs> pretty much uh, gone, but I mean, I'll tell you what, uh, yeah, that number 93, it was a shame that that happened because he's always quick. Remember a $50 bonus to the winner of this race, courtesy of Dave Prince of Precision Racing. And a great start for the 93 and Christian again. Here comes Banfield to challenge Garside for second. Here comes Anthony Flanner to the inside. The 25 car's rocking down the back stretch. Look at the number 22 of Banfield. He gets by Garside. Now he attacks a back bumper of the Christian car. And Jason Palmer wants to get involved. The top four cars can fit in a fishbowl. Banfield and Garside got into each other. Here comes Palmer. He goes to the inside trying to get up to third spot. Palmer is able to skateboard his way underneath Garside. They are even and now give Jason Palmer third place. They, uh, the 35 of Bruce Thomas Jr. He's got a good run going. He's trying to take over sixth spot against the 50. Car. And it doesn't matter where Bruce Thomas wants to put it. The high groove or the low groove, it seems to respond everywhere. Nobody's responding quicker than Ray Christian III, but trailing by about the length of a Twinkie is at number 22 of Jim Banfield. Now it is Thomas attacking Chris Garside. Anthony Flannery up to the four spot trying to get to the rear bumper of the 17 car. Still best battle on the speedway could be between the 35 and the 15. That's big country against the truth. 
Six laps completed. Here comes Banfield making a power move. And he is able to torpedo his way into the lead on lap number 18. Jim Banfield, your new leader. Here comes a challenge for second spot. It is the number 17 of Jason Palmer. Seven down, and when they hit the line, there'll be eight. Lap number eight, 22 to go. And here is Palmer, as he's able to whistle his way underneath the 93 of Christian. Number four, like the 35, wasn't even there. Almost put the number 35 of Thomas into the wall. And here comes Thomas to the outside of Flannery. He is moving very carefully. Around goes Christian, and he recovers. Boy, nice recovery there by him. Driving right there. Looked like a tilt a whirl, but he was able to bring the car back to life. Best battle, fourth and fifth. Anthony Flannery, and now a threat is being posed to the outside by Thomas. The rear end almost comes around on that number 35 car, an indication of hard driving. Thomas will not go away. He is pestering Flannery for the spot. That is position number four. If he gets by him, he's going to try for a podium run here. And here is Thomas against Christian. Trying to do it the tough way to the outside, but Thomas has made a lot of passes in the jet stream. Bruce Thomas all over the 93 like felt on a pool table, and Bruce Thomas has moved into the top three. Anthony Flannery now moves into first spot with RC3, almost put into the wall and turn number one. And getting underneath him was Jeff Smith, and on the verge of getting underneath him is Chris Garside. Palmer wandering to the outside of our leader, Jim Banfield. Banfield looking for his first ever Street Bowl victory. Here comes Jason Palmer, your champion. He's going for the lead down the back stretch. As he tsunamis his way around the 22, goes high in the corner, brings some life into Banfield, but our new leader, Jason Palmer. Palmer puts the CWPM Chevrolet to the spot. The United Paint number 22 goes down to second spot now, and a good run with the 35 car trying to chase him down. And Thomas has enough time, but we have a problem, as I believe that is Warren, who goes around while that green and white car... Well, 15 to go, excuse me, 15 to go, halfway through. Looks like the pace car lights are off, so we're going to leave it up to the drivers this time by, and uh, let's see if Banfield has anything for Jason Palmer. So the second half of the race is about to unfold with Jim Banfield in the front row with Jason Palmer. Great jump, like soda, out of a shaken can for Jason Palmer, and Flannery trying to take advantage of that to move into second. Yeah, Flannery scoots around to Thomas in the 35. Oh, oh he goes around. Banfield is around. Late miles. And he is hammered like a pinata at a children's birthday party. Rosaforth involved, Boren involved, Carlson involved, and Banfield. He took some punishment. Boy, a heartbreaker right there. Jim Banfield had himself a great run going, that's for sure. And Carlson, the starter stand tonight, teamed up with George DeCoster, and they are scrutinizing the action, which still has 15 laps to go in this late model race. We still have the mini stocks. The Legends, the SK Modifieds, and the SK Lights, and we also have Dave Barrowball. Well, that's Ken Moran heading back out of the number 81. They were able to complete the work on the front end of that machine. And when he comes out, you're going to see she's missing a few parts, but they were able to get her to get back out onto the track. Well, we'll see if he can make it out in time as we are ready for a restart. And this will be a barn burner. And Palmer gets a jump, but look at Bruce Thomas recover. Bruce Thomas Jr.'s got some bite. He's on the outside, and it's a challenge for the lead. Boy, what a mess that Ken Boren car. You talk about looking like Skeletor. That's the case for the 81. What an intense battle as uh, Palmer leading, but all over him like ice on an igloo. Is the number 35 of Bruce Thomas Jr. Thomas Jr. with a great burst of speed under the Mr. Rooter sign. He's going to get the lead in turn number three. Let's see if he can keep it when they hit the line. New leader, Bruce Thomas Jr. The 17 right there still to the inside. It's a colossal battle on the turn number two. Thomas, he's got himself a fast car tonight. They're trying to retaliate is Palmer. They almost got into each other, but no damage. As they swoop off the turn, here is Bruce Thomas Jr. Fireballs his way into turn two. Big country right there in third spot. It looks like Chris Garside make that RC3 all the way up to fourth. 
Yeah, he's made a pretty good comeback. And Anthony Flannery is trying to make a good comeback. As right now, he tries to get underneath that number seven car at the front of the field, Bruce Thomas, as he is leading by the length of a cute stick, you pull stick, over that number 17 of Jason Palmer. This time by 10 laps to go, says George DaCosta, as the late models continue to scream around this one-third mile paved oval. And let's see if Palmer is capable of making a comeback. The best three-car battle is deeper in the field as Flannery trying to make some noise. And also, Walt Sutcliffe has come back at car number 38. We thought he was done, but he looks pretty impressive. Boy, Flannery and Charlie Rose get into each other right under the start finish line. Rose almost put the number seven right square into the wall. I think Flannery got a few thorns that time from Rose. But it is Thomas pulling away from Jason Palmer. Something very difficult to do. And big country Jeff Smith, since he's come back to the bowl, he has had a lot of podium finishes, and he is a handful of laps away from getting another one. Yeah, doing a good job. Also right there in fourth is RC3 with Chris Garside in fifth, driving the 83. Seven to go for Bruce Thomas Jr. Trying to lengthen his lead against Jason Palmer, and we could have a battle for third and fourth between Jeff Smith and Ray Christian. Remember, Ray Christian is trying to move up the point ladder. He also has to worry about Chris Garside behind him. And maybe things are getting a little tighter up at the front. Yeah, it looks like Jason's rested those tires. He's trying to get to the rear bumper of Thomas. Maybe Thomas' car is going away from him. Three to go. Make that four to go. Five to go right now. Five to go. 25 down, five to go. And Bruce Thomas, remember, he had to pass a few more cars than Palmer did to get to the front. So they lightning bolt their way off the quarter, leading by about the length of a lead pole. It's the number 35 of Thomas, but Palmer is not giving up. Anthony Flannery has moved the 25 up to the sixth position, but he's got a long ways to catch up the 83 machine. Look at that up front. It is intensifying. Three to go. So down to the final three. Uh, Thomas leading. In his hip pocket is Jason Palmer. And third is Jeff Smith. In the neighborhood are Christian and Garside. Down to the final two, Bruce Thomas looking for his first win of the year. One thing Jason Palmer does not do, it is give up. That number 17 car is right there. He is making a challenge once again for the lead. The 35 of Bruce Thomas Jr. has got it covered so far. White flag is out. It looks like the 17 can catch him, but can he get by him? Look at the battle for the fourth spot between the 83 and the 93. Chris Garside's getting around the 93 for fourth. Battle for the lead is like, it looks like the 35. If he can keep it between the stripes, he could get the win. Here comes Bruce Thomas sideways on a turn number four, a win. Second spot to Jason Palmer, third to Big Country. Four spots, a dead heat between the 83 and the 93. We know 